Hey, what's going on my nerds and collectors alike? Once again, we are back at it with another Spider-Man No Way Home figure review. Today I've got my hands on the integrated suit, which you got there, which is interesting. We actually have the different languages picked out there. And this time we do again get the No Way Home logo as opposed to a couple of the other figures in this way of not having that. Very odd. But here we have Peter in his new suit sitting inside of his bubble there with the only two accessories he gets, the alternate thwip pans. Wish we would start getting wall crawling hands with MCU Spider-Man. But there we are. At the top of the packaging here, we do have the spider symbol. On the side there, we have a nice image of the integrated suit, as well as the No Way Home kind of wave-themed logo. On the other side, we have that same image, just flipped. On the bottom of the box there, you've got your unreadables, warnings, barcodes, all that fun stuff. On the back here, you've got your warnings in different languages. You've got all the figures in the wave, which again, I'm not finishing the build of figure. I just want the integrated suit, Doctor Strange as we've reviewed, J. Jonah as we've reviewed, and I'm trying to get a Miles Morales. We do have a larger image of Spider-Man back there on the back, and we also have his bio, which reads, Spider-Man. Spider-Man gears up in his integrated suit to bravely confront a new threat. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give spoilers in this review, so your warning is now, if you do not want spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, click away, go see the movie, come back. The movie is fantastic. You should definitely go see it. That has been your spoiler warning. We will be talking about events that happen in Spider-Man No Way Home. So we're going to go ahead and crack this guy open and see what he's about. All right. So here we have Spider-Man in his integrated suit. In uh, a pose some of you may recognize. Once again, there will be spoilers in this video. You've been warned. So here we have Spider-Man in his integrated suit. Um, right off the bat, I do want to let you guys know that if you have the Iron Spider suit uh, from that Iron Man and Iron Spider 2-pack, or if you got the Walmart exclusive No Way Home upgrade suit, which I am trying to get, so uh, when that, if I do end up getting that figure, when that review comes out, I will definitely do a comparison, and I'll show you the head swap on that too. But the Peter Parker head fits on the integrated suit without a problem. Um, I know some people have said that their heads are loose, but for me, this head fits on here just fine. So, very nice. But for the review, I am going to take it off. You be kind of careful because it is kind of sticky on there and the neck is soft so I'm a little bit paranoid just because there's a lot of flexing going on and it makes me a little bit nervous but do be aware that it does swap on there and then just popping that back on there we go here we have his mask which this has been confirmed to be a different sculpt than the upgrade suit and previous heads um, this time around we do have a nice matte red as opposed to the shiny red from that original Far From Home upgrade suit. I know that the Walmart exclusive upgrade suit also uh, looks more like this, which is very nice. We have that lovely golden spider picked out across there with the nice grayish blue color. Um, at first I will admit that I did not like how this suit looked and then when we finally got a trailer that came out and I saw the figure in hand, I fell in love with it. This thing looks beautiful and I especially love how um, after Peter corrupts Dr. Octopus's tentacles to control him when he finally frees Otto's mind and he gives him the nanotech back, I love how it transitions this suit from the upgraded suit into the integrated suit. Which, yes, that is how that happens. So Otto gives Peter the nanotechnology that he used to corrupt the tentacles back. And then those nanobots turn his upgraded suit into the integrated suit. But I love the detail here, and it looks fantastic in the movie, especially in that 
reigning scene when he's staring at the large screen of J. Jonah. The details on this thing look fantastic. The only thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is the red paint over top of the gray right here, but uh, it's just a little tiny bit of red and that's what they had to do. Speaking of a little tiny bit of red, we do have nice red lines running through the gray throughout the back here and up and around the spider. So that looks really nice. And then of course we have gold picked out here with the blue on the bottom of the boots and we do get nice sculpted tech lines throughout the legs in there and we do have these web shooters are actually a separate piece so when you are changing the hands be careful because these will try to pop off so that's one thing to be warned about um, we do get the nice blue on the back of the hands here and then of course the blue fingers so loads of detail on this guy. You still have your red lines running through and then that's what wraps up and around and on the arms and up through here and all the way around the back. So it looks very nice. Getting into articulation, as you saw, his head is on a dumbbell joint and he has kind of a soft neck. Um, do be aware there's a break here. So maybe to somewhere down the line, we will get a different uh, release for this figure where it has the mask come down for the neck and we'll get another Peter Parker head that remains to be seen but he can look up that far he can look down that far and we do get a nice tilt for our Spidey here which is very nice for his arms we get a 360 rotation uh, they do come up not quite 90 degrees, so that is a little bit of a bummer there, not quite 90 degrees. And another kind of disappointing aspect of this figure is the butterfly joints. So we get butterfly joints on him, which is awesome. Problem is, they only go forward that far because of the uh, lack of a cutout there on the back there's a large cutout but for some reason it only goes back that far it just stops it doesn't go any further than that and I don't feel like trying to force it and then ended up breaking my figure because this guy has been very hard to find um, so yeah for some reason it just stops there and doesn't continue so the butterfly joint is kind of useless even though they added one which is pretty disappointing um doesn't ruin the figure for me but definitely is a disappointing aspect of that but moving on we do have bicep rotation and we do have pinless joints on this figure which is very nice uh for the double jointed elbow that bends up very high can almost touch his shoulder for both sets of hands they do rotate and they both have an in and out hinge and just to demonstrate, take the hands off there. You've got the whipping hand with, again, the nice blue gray on the back of the hands. And then the fingers have that same color on there. But uh, when you're swapping off the hands, these do just slide on there. So that's what that looks like. So be aware, um, there is a little line sculpted up in the web shooter and you just Make sure it's on there and careful because it might try to fall off when you swap. And you just put the hand back on and there you go. So now you've got your flipping hand on there, which I'm just going to swap back to a fist for this video. They're a little bit snug, but I'd rather have a snug fit and keep the articulation at a nice tight uh, grip than have it be super loose and just spinning around everywhere. So, continuing onward, he has a crunch, which crunches forward pretty good amount. Nice to see that he's crunching forward that far. Would have been nice to have a diaphragm joint with that crunch just to get a little bit further, but hey, can't complain. That's a pretty good looking crunch there. He can crunch back a little bit less, but still pretty good. So you can, you can get some backwards pose in there. 
We also get a swivel at the waist with a nice ratchet on that. He can kick forward slightly past 90. Um, they did finally, finally give us a good kick out. So he can kick out at almost 90 degrees. So what they finally did was on that ball joint, we have a deeper cut now, which means if you have Spider-Man kicking out, he can almost do the splits and he can get nice high kicks. So that's very, very good to see. If we got that cut just a little bit more, would have been nice. You can see in there how deep that cut is on the hip now. I think they can't quite cut it any more just due to trying to keep the peg on there, but that is much better than previous Spider-Man that we've gotten from Marvel Legends team, so that is fantastic. We get a cut at the thigh. We do have double jointed knees, and once again, they are pinless. If you bend the bottom knee first and then bend this one, you will get in more. Um, doesn't quite kick his ass, but he can kick the middle of his back, so that's very good. No boot cut, but we do get hinges at the ankles. He can hinge all the way down. And as long as you're careful with it, he can hinge a good bit forward. And then we also get our ankle rocker as always. So overall, you do get quite a good bit of movement out of this Spider-Man figure. And I do love just the presence he has. He looks very nice, cuts a very good silhouette, looks really proportionate. And it's also very nice uh, that the Peter Parker head, they made the ball fit this head, which tells me at some point, we will probably be getting another version of this figure, especially for people who've missed the first release. Um, I know that there are supposed to be at least one more wave that will most likely include the two other Spider-Man in the film. As you know, Andrew Garfield and Tommy McGuire do reprise their roles as the two other Peter Parkers to assist our Tom Holland Spider-Man in this movie. So uh, when those come out, I will definitely be trying to pick those up. We definitely, definitely need a new Toby and a new Andrew version of Spider-Man because back when uh, the Andrew Garfield versions uh, movies came out, those figures, Hasbro kind of hadn't hit their stride yet. We weren't in the golden age of Marvel Legends yet, so it was a very awkward looking figure. The proportions were all kind of off. It was very spindly. So I'm very excited to see what they can do now with a new Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, a new Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, and they definitely will look great with this one. But speaking of Spider-Man, let's go ahead and get some comparisons here. We will do the Far From Home upgrade suit first because this is the suit that gets turned into the integrated suit. And as you can see, that is the Mafex version. And even though that is the import, they are still standing almost exactly the same height and we will go ahead and put in the iron spider version which is kind of reminiscent of what that suit is this is literally just that suit and this suit put together so that's how those stand together and this figure definitely feels much better than even the iron spider did and i know back when we got this figure that was a definite upgrade from the previous figures so very good to be seeing Hasbro moving forward with how they're doing Spider-Man figures. Taking these two guys out of here. It will definitely be uh, interesting to see how they do the new classic looking suit that you see at the end of the movie. Speaking of the classic looking suit, here is Peter's first tech suit from Tony Stark. And just because, here is Peter next to his homemade suit just to kind of see how far he's come. Here's his first suit with his latest suit because we barely get to see his new suit at the end of that movie, which is going to be very exciting to see. He looks great in that final uh, swing scene. Taking him out of here.
And just to compare him to the other No Way Home figures that I've got here, we have him next to Doctor Strange, which these two do make an appearance together. Doctor Strange does show up at the end after he's been dangling over the Grand Canyon forever for 12 hours. So he comes back and helps Peter send uh, the Sinister Six home, as well as the other Spider-Men. And here is J. Jonah Jameson. So that's how they look next to this new Spider-Man. Taking them out of here. So final thoughts. I love how this figure looks. Uh, some of the articulation does leave a little bit to be desired. Some of it exceeds even what we've gotten in the past, which is also very nice. Overall, I love the figure. I think this is a fantastic version of Spider-Man. As long as they could just fix those butterfly joints, figure out what's going on there. If they got that down, uh, maybe if we added a diaphragm joint with the crunch on there and got some MCU wall crawling hands, this probably would be a perfect figure. So definitely, definitely recommend this figure. He is pretty hard to get. Um, I know that Hasbro Pulse ended up getting a shipment of these guys in, which is how I got mine. I followed them on Twitter and ended up getting the notification that he was back in stock for a short time, so I picked mine up direct stock. Big Bad Toy Store still has theirs on pre-order. Dorkside Toys still has theirs for pre-order, so you can pre-order more after their initial sales. But finding him in the wild is going to be impossible, especially since this movie has been so hyped. It's already broken a billion dollars at the box office, and it's barely been out for like two weeks. Um, so definitely, definitely be on the lookout for this guy. Get your pre-orders in if you want them. If you know you definitely want this suit, do whatever you can to find him. Do not pay scalper prices on eBay or Macari. I know they're going for upwards of $50 to $60. It's an excellent figure, and as much as I recommend it, never pay scalper prices if you don't have to beat the scalpers but uh before i sign off here i do want to say that this channel and all of its content is not for anybody under the ages of 13 years old happy collecting everybody and stay safe